Hello and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how we can use this 3D scene and make a 3D main menu for a game. Um, so for this 3D scene, I just used an asset pack available in the Unreal uh, Store library and it's called uh, Stylized Egypt. So the pack actually came with this demo scene, which is beautiful. And we're going to use it today to make a really nice uh, 3D main menu scene. So the first thing we're going to want for a main menu is a widget. So in order to get this widget, all you have to do is right click on the content browser, go to user interface, and you, here you'll find widget blueprint. Click on that. Now let's rename it widget underscore main menu. And let's open that up. So straight away, a couple things that we are going to want. Uh, straight away, a couple things that we're going to want is, of course, we're going to want some kind of text, right? This is for our title. In some cases, you can use an image, but we don't have that uh, content right now, so we're using text. Let's call this main menu of blah blah game. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we make this big. Let's make this 50, 0.5 here. Then we zero this out. And there we go. Main menu of blah, blah game. And the next thing we're going to want is a few buttons. So we go over here to the palette and we search button. You have this button option. You drag it out, drag it into the scene. You can scale it to any size you want. So let's go like this big. And here's a little trick, guys. So you see this little flower thing over here? It always starts, on, it always, uh, by default, it's on the top left, which is basically the origin of the widget element you have selected. So it's really important to set this where you plan your widget to sort of hang from, right? Like I want this button to sort of hang from the middle of the screen because it's a button that's simply on the middle of the screen. So I'm gonna click on it and then head over here to the anchors, click on that, open it up. And we're gonna simply select the center one. So now you see the flower thing is moved over here to the center. And now this button is anchored to the center of the screen. So let's hit compile, hit save. Um, let's put some text on this button so we know what it is. So let's call this button fight, which is basically a play now button, right? Make it a little, a little bigger. Uh, and then let's let's name this button. Let's call it play button. Now I'm gonna simply duplicate this button so that we don't have to make them all again. And let's call this uh, let's name this button exit button. And then change the text to quit or exit. There we go. And then if we click on this button, you see that because we uh, that because we copy pasted it, it actually um, is also anchored to the center of the screen. So that's good. Um, okay. Before anything else, we hit compile, we hit save, and what we're gonna want to do here is we're gonna want to open the level blueprint. Hit open level blueprint. And delete this tick because we don't need the tick here. So from event player, we're gonna want to create a widget and we're going to select the widget that we made so widget underscore main menu main menu and you're always going to want to drag out from this return value let go and put add to viewport because what happens here is when you just create the widget it, it doesn't actually show the widget to the screen the thing that makes it do that is this thing called add to viewport so once you call this out then uh, the widget is actually shown on the screen like creating the widget makes it exist in 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 the game but it doesn't show it to the user until you call uh, this add to viewport function hit compile hit save uh, so we go over here and we hit play and we should see yeah our main menu fight exit yada yada um, all right, so now let's set up a camera for our scene, right? I think this this area is actually quite nice, like this uh, entrance as our main menu. 
So we go over to the search bar in the place actors and we can search for camera. Drag the camera into the scene and here we have our camera. So you get a little viewport here in the corner and we can actually pin that so that we can look at it while we position our camera. So something like that. Mm -hmm. I want to get both the statues in frame. Maybe a little bit of the stairs, drag it back a little bit. And yeah, that looks pretty cool to me. So you see our camera actor is over here. And what I want to do is I actually want to use a, a level sequencer in order to make this camera move uh, side to side just a little bit or forward backwards just a little bit to give it some interest. So we go over to our cinematics uh, tab over here, over here, click on it, add level sequence. We'll call this L underscore main menu sequence. And we're gonna hit save. So now we get this new thing, which looks like, oh, where'd it go? This uh, new thing, which looks like the director's cut thing, which is basically, yeah, level sequencer. So um, level sequencer, here it is in the content browser that we just saved, L underscore main menu sequence. And we also get this new tab called Sequencer, which is basically a timeline like this. So let's say we don't have that Sequencer open, right? We can click on this uh, Director's Cut icon and then hit Open Level Sequence. And that'll give us back the timeline. So the reason why I mentioned that to you guys is uh, this timeline is extremely important. You can use it for so many things like cutscenes. You can use it for in-game cutscenes. Uh, main menus like what we're doing right now and so much more but all right let's let's get on to it so we're gonna want to click on this camera and we're gonna want to click track over here and add actor to sequencer add camera actor so this added the camera into the sequencer but we don't want to be controlling it so we eject from here and our camera is now inside the sequencer so you can see camera actor over here which is basically this camera actor. And I'm actually gonna unconstrain this so it doesn't look weird when we when we uh, use it. So I click on this, unconstraint, uh, aspect ratio, default is clicked, so it's like a little squished, and then you can un untick it to get the full view. All right, and then over here, I'm gonna change the where is it? I'm gonna change the, oh, here we go. So I always like changing show time as seconds instead of frames, just so it's easier to understand. So go to seconds and yeah, five seconds is good for me. So what we're gonna wanna do here is we're gonna wanna select our camera actor in the timeline, open it up and we have the transform uh, we have the transform variables in here, or the data for transform in here. So we're gonna wanna manipulate this so that it sort of moves back forward and backward just a little bit. So we go over to location. Uh, you, don't, you don't actually have to open it up, you can simply leave it closed. But we're gonna wanna put a, a stop here, a, a, a frame, a, a keyframe. So we hit plus, you get this little circle. And I want it to move, for two seconds, I want it to move forward just a little bit, just like that. And then I hit plus here again, puts another frame. So now you can see the camera moving, right? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, all right, let's put it 2.5, 2.5. So it's a little slower. And then I'm gonna select this keyframe, copy it, control C, and then go all the way to the end and paste it, right? So basically what's happening here is it's going forward and then it goes back and if I play this on a loop, it's, it's, it's going to go forward and backwards forever, right? So let's save this. Um, mm -hmm. And what we can do here is we can click on this uh, sequencer and hit autoplay right there. Autoplay. And loop indefinitely, right? So if I hit play, we're actually in the camera sequence that we just set up. Right, so we have the camera moving forward and backwards. We got the main menu that still pops up. Uh, yeah, it's a little fast for me, but you get the idea, right? You could have the camera moving a little bit during the main menu. So 
So hit escape. Now let's add some functionality to these buttons in the main menu screen, right? So I'm gonna click on the play button and over here on the right side, you can scroll all the way down and you have all the events that you can program into the button. So we want an on clicked event. So that means when I click on this button, whatever I put in here is what the button will do. So since this is the play button, we're simply gonna, uh, we're gonna open a level by name, right? So assuming you have your game in order, this level that you open will be your play level, right? But we, but since this is just a demo, I don't actually have a level uh, ready for you guys. So let's just open up the default uh, first person example map. So I'm gonna copy the name of this and paste it into the open level. So level name, I'm gonna paste first person example map in there. Hit compile and save. And then uh, for the exit button, you want to click on the exit button, scroll down here, on clicked. All you want to do is type in quit game and compile and save, right? Simple enough. So now when we, uh, when I hit play, it still brings me into this nice uh, 3D movement of the camera going in and out of the environment. But now you have your two buttons here and they have some functionality. So first let's go with the exit button. Let's see what happens. Click it, closes the program, right? Exactly what we thought it would do. So I hit play and hit fight. So now it brings me into whatever level you put in there, which in my case is the default uh, example level. So I'm gonna hit escape here and we could do a few more things to make this main menu a bit more appealing, right? It's a little there's some tricks that I like to do, like adding an image and then scaling it really big. Uh, and I just call this BGM, which, uh, or I just call this BG, which is like background. Uh, so I drag it all the way to the top. We want to make sure that our text are actually, so this image, uh, put it in the center. And then I like to make this black. And what I like to do is Put the opacity down 0 0.3 0 0.25 and hit compile and you you can see the result here right it just gives this like darker look to the scene uh yeah and i could make it 0 0.5 if i want it even darker right and there's a couple other things i could show you here. so let's delete this uh, background image there's something called a blur a background blur uh effect so you drag it in, it just looks like this empty box, right? But so I'm gonna spread it out the entire scene, drag it to the top. And then over here, there's something called blur strength. I'm gonna make this 0.5 or let's try one. So everything behind this uh, background blur will actually be blurred a little bit, right? So if I hit play, you can see that the scene is a little more blurred, but let's make that more dramatic. So let's change this to five so you can really see the blur. Hit play. There you go. See, the scene in the back is blurred out. But this is a case by case basis. Uh, you don't want to use this for all of your games, only if it makes sense, right? Um, and then let's add a few more things to the buttons over here just so we can uh, make it look a little better. So over here in the buttons, and all buttons have this, even the uh, default one. Let's pull one out just to show you. Okay, I'm gonna delete this uh, blur background. Let's drag in a button. And when you drag out a button, you'll notice uh, three things when you open up this uh, style tab. So you have normal, hovered, and pressed. And that's exactly what it means, right? So I'm gonna delete this and use this one. So normal is basically how it looks normally. I'm gonna make it red, right? I'm gonna make this dramatic so you guys can see exactly what I mean. So normal will be red, hovered, let's make it blue. Yeah, blue. And then when you actually press down on it, I'm gonna make it black. So hit compile and save, and I'm gonna hit the play again. So you can see this fight button right now is red, but as soon as I hover over it with my mouse, it turns blue, right? And when I click, it's black. So that's how you could like 
uh, customize your designs and the buttons and how they react when you press or when you hover. Um, but usually what people do is just uh, they sort of they sort of tint over the so I'm gonna close all these tabs and go on to pressed and over a tint I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker right gray so this is what a lot of people do you have your button you click it turns gray it just gives that nice uh, information that the button is being pressed so um, yeah that's pretty much it for your main menu this is a basic main menu uh, you got your play button, you got your exit button. You could add any other buttons you want in here if you have options. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and add them. Um, if you learned from this video, if you enjoyed, hit that like button. It helps us spread the video. It helps more people see this video. And if you want to support us, head over to our Google Play page where all our games are free. You could try them, you can play them. And if you really want to help us, leave a rating and a nice review on one of our games. Thank you so much. Peace out.